Hello artist. Today we are going to be adding some geometric lines and a story to your Greek vases that you sculpted last week. When you get your project, that'll be the first thing you need. You're going to need a sharpie, a dice, and then also this roll a Greek vase worksheet. I have already started on one side. I'm going to show you how to start using this blank side. So what you're going to be doing is simply rolling your dice. I got the number five. We don't need to do anything with this first row because we've already created the form of our vase. But on the next one, this row says neck. The neck of the vase is the skinnier part right here. So what we're going to be doing is whatever number you roll, you're going to find the geometric design of lines that go down the neck row. I've already started though on the other side and when I actually rolled the first time, I got a number one. So it was this design that I was drawing. So I'm gonna continue with that because I want my front and my back of my vase to be the same. All you're going to do is use your artist observation skills to figure out what to draw. When I look at that, I see a straight line going across the top. And again, this is the neck. So this is where I'm going to be drawing it in between the two handles. When I look again, I see another straight line down here at the bottom. I see another line running down the middle. And to me, those black objects look like olives. So I'm gonna be drawing those olives off to the sides. And then it looks like little leaves. So I'm gonna make skinnier leaves. And I'm gonna continue doing this pattern all along the neck of my vase. And it'll be a little bit difficult to draw because the clay is not completely smooth like a piece of paper would be, but just do your best. Remember, these vases are supposed to be 3,000 years old, so if they're a little bit messier, it'll actually give it some character. Using my observation skills, the last thing I see are those triangles, so I'm gonna fit in the triangles. So that's what your neck is going to look like right here between your two handles on the skinnier part and I matched the same design on the other side. I'm going to roll the dice again and the next row that I'm looking at says shoulder and foot. We're going to do just the shoulder first. So roll. Using my observation skills, I can look at that. The shoulder of the vase is right where the handles kind of line up to. So using my observation skills, I'm gonna look at this and know that I should start with a straight line all the way across. I'm ready to roll again to see what is going to be around the foot of the vase. And I got a five, so these curly cues. The foot of the vase is kind of low down here where this ring is. So what I'm going to do is using my observation skills, it looks like curl cues to me. So I'm just going to sit and take this and do some curl cues. And you can see that it continues all the way around kind of the bottom part of the vase. Neck, shoulder, foot, they all match. Now you kind of got a sneak preview as to what we're gonna do on the body part. This is called the body of the vase where the larger area is. And even though there are three rows for this, you're only going to do two of them. So body number one and body number two or three, you get to pick. Now this time, if you wanna just look at the figures and pick what you want, you can do that or you can roll if you'd like to do it that way. I chose the swimming figure on the front of my vase because I really enjoy swimming. And then for the back of my vase, I really enjoy riding bike with my family. Now some of these seem intimidating, but really if you just think about basic shapes, it becomes a lot easier. So I would start with those wheels, then think about how even the body could be basic shapes. That's his leg. And it's just a skinny oval that goes down to where his bicycle pedals would be. The front knee can be broken into two uh, ovals from the hip to the knee. 
and then also from the knee to the foot. His body is leaned over in that picture. I'm just using my observation skills to look at it. You're just darkening it in. You don't have to put details like uh, eyes and nose and all that. A little circle for the head, and then he's leaned over the wheel, so I'm gonna draw a line down and over like he's resting with his elbow, and then another hand. And I think the only thing that's missing is it needs a bar connecting the two wheels. So what you're gonna do in the body part is pick one of those figures that you really like to put an image, and you're telling a story on your vase, and on this side I put the swimmer. So this is the only area where they don't have to match. Everything else has to match. The neck, the shoulder, the foot, neck, shoulder, foot, all the same, but a different character and a different character. Now, if you think this is too hard for you and you don't want to put one of the bodies, you could simply roll again to get one of these designs and you could put another row of geometric designs all the way around your vase. So I'm gonna give you that choice. Either do a story with pictures and people or you can do another row of geometric lines. I'm done with my Sharpie, so I'm gonna return it. I'm done with my dice, so I'm gonna return it and also my worksheet. Now we're ready to paint our vase, and there's some materials that we're going to need. The first thing I'd like you to have is a bowl of water, a paintbrush, a napkin, and a watercolor set. Now when we learned about the Greek vases a few weeks ago, I said that they were only brown and black. So we're gonna dip, wipe on your bowl, you have to really load the brush. So I'm gonna swirl around and around and around. This is called loading the brush. I'm not pushing hard. I still want a good hair day. And I'm kind of making a water puddle to paint with. What you're gonna do now is simply just go over the entire vase. Go over the black Sharpie. The watercolor is thin enough that you can still see your image below just fine. Anytime you get ready to get more paint, you have to get water first. That's why it's called water color. You touch the water before you touch the color. Load your brush. And what you're trying to do during this step is fill in all your white spots. You don't want to see any white clay by the time this is over with. Now you won't be able to paint the entire inside of the vase, but you can swirl your brush in there as much as you can and just get what you can. We are going to be using black to accentuate some of the pot. And one of the areas that we're gonna be painting with black paint is going to be the foot of the vase. And I would actually start there because if this gets messed up a little bit, it's gonna be hidden underneath. That little ring that we added to our vase should all be black. The next part that we're gonna accentuate with black is going to be the handles. And again, lots of paint, only a little bit of water. spot not very much water is going to be the lip of the vase and that is basically right around the opening of it so we're just going to take our brush and paint that part black and that is what your Greek vase is going to look like after you add geometric lines and tell a story with your Sharpie first, then paint it brown, and lastly, add black to the handles, the foot, and the lip of the vase. For cleanup today, you're gonna leave your project right on the paper plate and wax paper where it is. You will carry it with two hands and store it where it goes. Make sure you shut your watercolor and put it back by your sink. Dirty brushes go in the brush bath inside of your sink to take a bath, so make sure you put those in the dirty brush bath. Pour out your dirty water and rinse your cup out before you put it back in the dish drainer. And before you throw away your napkin, make sure you've cleaned any paint or water 
that might have gotten on your tables. When you're finished with that, you may wash your hands. You don't need soap, just water. One, two, three, that's enough for me. And then you'll dry your hands with two napkins and have a seat. Good job today, artists.